Hello, welcome to Cheney United Methodist Church. I'm Craig Spears. I'm one of the trustees. We're here on a project to do open up the front door, a new door. I'm Chuck Cree. I'm head trustees. Uh, what we're doing here is our project, as you can see, as Craig said, want to welcome you to our initially opening. Some of the things that are going to happen here, we'll have a nice rock here. We'll have can lights filled up here. We're also doing some work on the alley side, um, right off the parking lot. We have a ramp, non-ramp, handrails will go in eventually. Yeah, the trustees, we take care of the maintenance of the church, make sure that, you know, it's all, all the heat's there and all the electrical's there, all the lighting, uh, and anything like this, this door project, that, that's kind of our responsibilities as trustees. Some of the other trustees, Bob Lincoln, Nelson Cordell, Craig is our electrical man, Bob is our water man. I just tell him what to do. I want to welcome to our uh, service this week, and uh, God bless. Hello, Becky Riley here, underneath this mask. Hello. Welcome to Behind the Scenes Bizarre Bizarre. Um, it looks chaotic, but um, Kathy Sautels, Ellen Hargrove, and myself kind of know where everything is. We've got everything entered into the system with more new items added to the bazaar. So I want to remind you of a couple things. First of all, we are still open, and we're open through December 5th. And um, we are also accepting donations still. We can upload to the system fairly easily, and we found it to be really, really cool. This example is Dorothy Dishman's latest donation for our second quilt raffle. Carol Cree won the first one, but we have this one now, $2 chance to, 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 to win this very beauty. So there's, there's lots going on. We're, we're delivering every Saturday, um, except for Thanksgiving weekend. And that's been a joy to have laughing, loving people in the church building um, delivering packages to people at the door. Um, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. And it's, it's, it's a challenge, but we're making it work, right, Kath? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Friends, hear the opening prayer. Spirit of the living God, we praise and adore you for empowering us to claim membership of the body of Christ, 
a gift received through the fullness of your grace. Empower us anew, we pray, with tongues of fire and hearts of love to proclaim the reconciling word among people. Remind us that we are all members of one body and that our ministry is only possible with the passion and commitment of everyone, given those who work behind the scenes. As we begin worship today, we give thanks for those hidden figures who have made this service possible. Pam McCandless, who joyfully cleans and sanitizes our church so we can safely film worship, organized for our virtual holiday bazaar and work in the office. Lori Murphy, our office manager, who supports our staff, keeps our congregation informed, and spends many hours printing, folding, and mailing at the home worship bulletin so all can participate. And Dale Cochran, who gives us his time, energy, and technology to help plan, film, and edit this online worship experience. May we join with them in a spirit of service and as members together as the body of Christ. Let our worship be the best evidence of your love by declaring and witnessing to this as the year of the Lord's favor for all people. We give thanks that all of us are Christ's body and rejoice in each one being a part of it. Accept our adoration and praise for these great gifts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm at the office with Bob Hello. and Neva Good morning. Lincoln, and we are filming a behind the scenes segment. Neva, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're working on? Good morning. I am sending to the shut ins eight ladies at present that want to receive something, something that someone is thinking about them. Many years ago, Ethel Vandenberg. Who, broke, who volunteered here at the church, thought it would be nice to have them something to do. So we sent them this uh, home touch, which gives them a nice, very nice story, Bible verses, and on the back, it is an activity sheet that they can do different things. I especially like this one in October. It said, cleaning house fascinates everyone in my family. They can sit around and watch me for hours. So, and I have received different things from the shut-ins that say, thank you. Thank you, it was nice to hear different things. Thank you, Neva. Bob, what do you do? My job is being responsible for making sure everything is folded, <coughs> stuffed in the envelopes, and mailed. Thank you, Bob. And Neva, if someone has a shut-in that they know of that they would like to have uh, to receive the at-home touch bulletin, how should they get a hold of you? It would be nice they could just call me at my house. You know, I'm home most of the time. 
Uh, and Neva. 235-8763. Thank you, Neva and Bob, for this wonderful mission. Hello, Cheney United Methodist Church. I'm Karen Lincoln, and I'm your liturgist for today. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 13 through 26, and this version comes from the message. We each used to independently call our own shots, but then we entered into a large and integrated life in which he is the final say in everything. This is what we proclaimed in word and action when we were baptized. Each of us is now part of his resurrection body, refreshed and sustained at one fountain, his spirit where we all come to drink. The old labels we once used to identify ourselves, labels like Jew or Greek, slave or free, are no longer useful. We need something larger, more comprehensive. I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. A body isn't just a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but smaller parts arranged and functioning together. If foot said, I'm not elegant like hand, embellished with rings, I guess I don't belong to this body, would that make it so? If ear said, I'm not beautiful like I, limpid and expressive, I don't deserve a place on the head. Would you want to remove it from your body? If the body was all eye, how could it hear? If all ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. But I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are a part of. An enormous eye or gigantic hand wouldn't be a body, but a monster. What we have in one body with many parts, each its proper size and its proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine eye telling hand, get lost, I don't need you. Or head telling foot, you're fired. Your job has been phased out. As a matter of fact, in practice, it works the other way. The lower the part, the more basic and therefore necessary. You can live without an eye, for instance, but you, not without a stomach. When it's part of your own body, you are concerned with it. It makes no difference whether the part is visible or clothed, higher or lower. You give it dignity and honor just as it is without comp compartments, comparisons. If anything, you have more concern for the lower parts than higher. If you had to choose, wouldn't you prefer good digestion to full-bodied hair? The way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church, every part dependent on every other part, the parts we mention and the parts we don't, the parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into exuberance. The word of life. Thanks be to God. If you've been around church for a while, then you're probably very familiar with the scripture passage that Karen just read. In fact, if you worshiped with us back in January of 2019, you know, back when we were worshiping in person, you might remember we read this exact same passage as part of a series called Greater Gifts. In that instance, we spent three weeks learning about the role of lifting up our gifts in community and strategically acting together as one body with many interconnected parts. This body then works as a cohesive unit to reach out beyond the walls of the church and bring people to know and receive the love of God. When it came to exploring this particular passage from 1 Corinthians 12 back then, our worship service focused on the importance of activating the gifts we are given by the Holy Spirit. If you're struggling to remember that service in particular, I told a story about losing my white debit card in the snow while skiing and having to activate the replacement once it arrived. Maybe that helps jog your memory. My point in telling the story was to provide an illustration of what 1 Corinthians 12 is teaching us. That God bestows gifts upon all of us at our baptism through the work of the Holy Spirit, and that different gifts are given out to different people in order that we can come together to build up the church 
and fulfill the church's mission to bring about the kingdom of God. When we don't activate those gifts, which the Corinthians struggled with, or we get caught up in thinking some of those gifts are better than others, which the Corinthians also got caught up in, then we're actually compromising the work of God. The Apostle Paul had a real issue with that, but rather than lose his cool and give the Corinthians a solid talking to, Paul emphasizes instead that there is a diversity of gifts given to each person, but it's by God's design, not because some are better than others. They all have equal value even though they come in different forms. Some are meant for carrying out the spiritual work of God, others for the ministries of God, and even still others for expressing the action of God's power. But the big point is that all the varieties of gifts originate from the same place, from God's Spirit. And though they're given out to individuals, they are intended to be used for God's purposes in the whole community. In other words, boasting and prioritizing isn't appropriate, and it detracts from what really is. Recognizing your individual gifts and activating them for the greater good of the church and its fulfillment for God's purposes in the world. What I also said in that sermon back in January 2019 is that I, as one of the pastors here at Cheney UMC, don't think we actually have exactly the same issue as the Corinthians when it comes to our spiritual gifts, that being boasting and prioritizing some gifts over others. Instead, I suggested that some of us might struggle in believing that we have gifts, or knowing what those gifts are and how to use them, which honestly I think is a perpetual challenge for people of faith. To help, I followed Paul's example, and rather than giving you a lecture on how wrong you are, everyone is gifted. I did offer some advice if you weren't yet sure what your spiritual gifts were. First, if you hadn't been baptized, I invited you to get baptized, and that invitation still stands. Once you're baptized, then you've got gifts to share, but if you don't know what those gifts are, we've got an assessment to help you figure it out, and I can still make that available to you if you'd like it. And it's always good once you've narrowed down to what gifts you do have to confirm them with other people in the church, to ask them if they see those gifts in you and how you put them to work. And last is to activate them by joining a ministry or starting a new one. I ended that sermon with an uplifting, imagine all the potential we have in this church if everyone knew and used their gifts and activated them, and so forth. And while we went on to do some really great ministry in 2019, I think it took this global pandemic to help me realize just how much unrealized potential we had here in the body of Christ at Chini UMC. Now, I would have never wished for COVID-19 to strike just so I could be taught the humbling lesson that God has truly blessed our church family with an abundance of gifts and that we had the potential to activate those gifts in ways I never would have imagined. But COVID did strike, and I did learn my lesson, and it was a good one. If you've been able to worship with us through this whole behind-the-scenes series, then you know what I'm talking about. We've seen people activate their gifts of decorating the sanctuary, providing sacred music, reading liturgy, and preaching so we can join together as a body of Christ to praise God and worship. We've seen people activate their gifts for mission and give of both their time and financial gifts to eliminate hunger through Bite to Go and Feed Chini, to provide ash sifters for wildfire victims, and engage in virtual mission trips so that all people across the world know the promise of God's salvation. Last week, we saw people at Chini UMC and Manitou UMC activating their gifts for discipleship and helping each other grow as disciples by making worship accessible to all, engaging in Bible study, book studies, campus ministry, and dedicating time and energy to practicing spirit-lifting music. And today, this service is full of people activating their God-given gifts to do the nitty-gritty, truly behind-the-scenes business work of running a church. From trustees keeping our facility up to date and running well, to the finance team managing and tracking our resources faithfully, to individual people giving of their time and energy to keep everyone connected to the body of Christ. In the scripture that we read today, Eugene Peter worded this behind-the-scenes phenomenon that we're living like this. The way that God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. Every part dependent on every other part. The parts we mention, the parts we don't, the parts we see, the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. 
If one part flourishes, every other part enters into exuberance. In other words, what this behind the scenes series has demonstrated is how God has drawn us together here at Cheney EMC so that we collectively have what we need to keep doing the work of building up the kingdom of God, even in a pandemic. Resources to feed the hungry, to reach out to the lonely, to teach the good news to all the world, and so much more. To say that I am proud of our church is an understatement. Despite all the challenges that COVID-19 has thrown at us this year, and all the times in which pandemic fatigue might have us thinking it's time to give up and throw in the towel, together we have overcome discouragement, met adversity with creativity, and flat out refused to let our gifts go to waste. Instead, we relied on each other, trusted each other, and encouraged each other to dig deep into our spiritual reserves to address the needs of this moment. And we've been able to do all this good work by the grace of God and the never-ending outpouring of spirit-given power shared among us all. I'm also proud of the fact that in four short worship services, we've managed to squeeze in highlighting over 70 different people, their unique gifts, and the 25 plus ministries that are possible when they combine their gifts together. And I share those numbers knowing that there are many more people and many more ministries going on behind the scenes here at Cheney UMC that we didn't have space to highlight. What these statistics tell me and what I hope they're telling you is that right now in 2020, during a global pandemic that impacted our normal operations, we, the body of Christ at Cheney UMC, are using the gifts of God that we have so generously been given to keep on seeking, serving, and sharing Jesus Christ. Which brings me to another learning from our previous study of 1 Corinthians 12 and this pandemic. When you've all figured out your gifts and activated them collectively in the body of Christ and been inspired to do so under unexpected circumstances, it's a good time to take time to thank God for giving us what our church needs. To thank God for giving you and your siblings in Christ the gifts that you need to carry on your work here. To give thanks to God for the power of the Holy Spirit to both bestow these gifts upon us, but also provide the necessary inspiration, see what I did there? To put those gifts into action through worship, mission, discipleship, and all the nitty gritty work that needs to get done to fulfill this church's mission. So that's what we're gonna do in the next part of this service. We're gonna give thanks to God, and we're gonna show our thanks by giving back to God a portion of what God has given us. While this behind the scenes series wasn't able to show all the financial giving that you all are doing, the reality is that your generosity in sharing your spiritual gifts is matched by your generosity in offering your financial gifts. We collectively, as a body of Christ, could not have done all we've accomplished for God in 2020 without the combined offering of both types of giving. The spiritual ones given by us to us by God and activated by each of us through the Holy Spirit, plus the financial gifts given freely by you and activated by our ministry partnership. For all this, I give thanks and so much more. And while I know this series hasn't felt or looked like your traditional stewardship series, worship series, the goal has been the same as years previous, to help open our eyes and align our hearts to the work that God is doing right now here in our midst and respond with a faithful commitment to support that work through our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness into the future. Because in all honesty, I don't know what 2021 holds for us as a church, as a nation, or as a global community. In the next few months, we'll be navigating a presidential transition, cold, snowy weather is sure to come, and COVID-19 shows no sign of stopping its onslaught on our world. All of this has the potential to impact our ministry together. Despite this unknown future, though, one thing I do know and I have confidence in is that no matter what 2021 may bring, God will continue to pour out gifts on the people of Cheney UMC and on people everywhere that faithfully worship him. And if we, with the Christians around the world, accept those gifts from God, and if we activate them by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
If we can give generously of our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness in good times and especially in challenging seasons, and if we can always remember that our calling is to seek, serve, and share Jesus Christ no matter what, then there's nothing that can keep us from fulfilling God's mission for the church in our community and the world. Absolutely nothing. So thank you. Thank you for an incredible year of mission and ministry, despite a global pandemic. Thank you for trusting in the generosity of our God and for responding in kind. Thank you for never giving up on your call to be in relationship with your creator and with your brothers and sisters through worship, mission, discipleship, and more. And thank you for the joy and pleasure of serving as your pastor. Pastor Pat and I are blessed to be one small part of this magnificent body of Christ called Chain UMC. So I invite you to join with me in an outpouring of gratitude to God for all that has been and all that will be, along with an expression of hope for a future that is coming. Here's to another year of ministry with each other, and here's to stepping faithfully into a future supplied with all the gifts we need to serve. Alleluia. Amen. But first, a little P.S. If we were worshiping in person, after the benediction, you'd get the benefit from the behind-the-scenes work of one of our biggest teams, Nurturing and Hospitality. They're known for coordinating our congregation to ensure a good spread at fellowship time. From soup and salad bars to cheese and crackers to cookies and treats, they make sure we have good food to share while joining in some good Christian fellowship. But even though we can't gather in person right now and can't enjoy the goodies and potlucks we United Methodists are known for, doesn't mean that this team is on hiatus. I want to give you a little behind-the-scenes look at what nurturing and hospitality are up to and how they're helping keep this body of Christ connected. Hi, I'm Archie Lindner, one of the original nurturing team leaders along with Eva Dixon and Ellen Hargrove. Uh, the purpose of the nurturing ministry is to keep in touch with members of our congregation on an ongoing basis. This was started back in 2009 under the direction of Pastor Joanne Coleman Campbell. Hi, I'm Ellen Hargrove, and as Margie said, I'm one of the original team members on the nurturing committee. Once we had our committee formed, then we looked at membership and attendance records, and we uh, assigned everybody a nurturing team to be on. There are currently seven teams with 14 to 16 families and individual on each team. And Margie came up with the name for these teams. Yes. This was fun. Um, each of our teams has a meaningful name taken from Galatians 5, 22, 23, which lists the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. After discussion, each of the original leaders chose a name. Thus, we have kind kiwis, loving lemons, patient plums, faithful figs, peaceful peaches, and stretching to the bit, goodly grapes and blissful bananas. Our leaders exemplify these fruits. Now, during this COVID time, we are not doing quite the same things we did uh, before COVID. However, our main purpose is still to keep in touch with everyone in the congregation and in our church community. We're doing this now by sending birthday cards, anniversary cards, and holiday cards to everyone. We're also sending emails and we make frequent phone calls. With my group, Kind Kiwis, I plan to send an updated list of her team in my Thanksgiving cards. I want to remind people to hold each other in prayer during these unusual times, especially during the holiday season. I also want to remind church members they can contact their team leader as another way to reach the church with prayer requests and other needs. Oh. 
time and space when we fear the future give to us your grace in the midst of changing ways give us still the grace to praise many gifts one spirit one love known in many ways in our difference is blessed from diversity we praise one giver one lord one spirit one word known in many ways hallowing our days for the giver for the gifts praise 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 god of many colors god of many signs you have made us different blessing many kinds as the old ways disappear let your love cast out our fear many gifts one spirit one love known in many ways in our difference is blessing from diversity we praise one giver one lord one spirit one word in many ways, hallowing our days, for the giver, for the gifts, praise, 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 freshness of the morning, newness of each night, you are still creating endless love and light, this we sing as shadows part, many from one great heart. Many gifts, one spirit, one love known in many ways. In our difference is blessing from diversity. We praise one giver, one Lord, one spirit, one word known in many ways. Hallowing our days Before we receive our offering today, we'd like to give you a behind the scenes glimpse at the team that takes care of all of the finances for our church. So let me give you a chance to meet our finance team. Let's start with our chairperson. Hello everybody, I'm Roger Birch and I'm privileged to be the chairman of the finance team for our church. And it's a really great job because it's really fairly simple. Uh, we have a very good roadmap that has been presented in the past and goes to the future by our treasurer. And we look back and we look back at what we've done and what we want to do, and it works out very well. We really take the uh, finance of part of the church in two parts. Uh, we have, a, have sufficient funds set aside for all our short-term needs. And way back in 2004, the church decided that we wanted to uh, put some longer-term funds to work. And so we've had an investment account with, with Morgan Stanley and Company. And through the years, uh, we've spent money out of there to our capital projects, like the work being done in the church right now. But we've also uh, been able to add to that. So our church has done very, very well financially, both short term and long term. And I'll turn it over to our next member of our, our, our committee. Thanks, Roger. How about our financial secretary? Hi, I'm Julie Peck, and I'm the church financial secretary. What that means is I enter the giving that comes in through the offering plate or the mail every week. Um, under your name so that you get a statement at the end of the year uh, to use for taxes or for your own um, use of any kind. So nice thing for me is I'm gone a lot if you haven't noticed and I can do this at home when I want to. So it's a good, it's a good job for me. Thanks, Julie. And Welcome. how about our treasurer? Hi there. It's Karen Marsh here, and um, in 2002, if you can believe it, Pastor George Abrams asked me if I would consider serving as the treasurer of the church, and um, he took a chance on me. He had confidence in me, and 18 years later, here I am, uh, still paying bills and recording income and um, 
trying to keep uh, payroll uh, smoothly running. So uh, our pastors are happy and our administrative staff are happy. Um, I just want to thank everyone. I know that the rest of the team will do this as well for your continuing financial support over this uh, critical time. And we'll try to be good stewards of the money that you that you um, send to the church. Thank you. And you'll notice that Pastor Pat and I are also members of this team. And I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Pat to offer a thank you on our behalf to all of you. Absolutely. Um, you know, when this virus happened, none of us were ready for it, right? I, I mean, how do you plan on, on such a thing? And this could have been so much different without the help and the generous support of this community of faith. Uh, you have stepped up. You have done the best, the very best that you could, could do through all of this. Um, and I, I just want to say, I mean, from everybody on this team, we're so very grateful for the hard work and the sacrifice that you've made. Amen. 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 And now we invite you into our time of offering. Brothers and sisters, the pledge forms that we ask you to send in, we have right here today. And we are going to bless uh, the gifts of your tithes and offerings. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Friends, over the past few weeks, we've been looking at all the work that takes place behind the scenes to make worship and mission and the ministry at Cheney United Methodist Church happen. We've learned how our sacred music is chosen, how our sanctuary is decorated, and how our pastors craft their sermons all in a desire to help us all worship God. We've had our hearts inspired by the many ways missions continued in new and adaptive ways in the midst of COVID-19. And we've had a glimpse into the disciple-making work of our Bible study groups, small groups, and more. And today we've given thanks to God for all the ways in which he's gifted and called people in our church to serve in myriad ways, from up front to behind the scenes. We pray that this series has given us an opportunity to praise and thank God for calling us together in this body of Christ to do good and needful work in our community this day and in the days ahead. For those who sent in your pledge forms for 2021 or intend to soon, thank you so much. On behalf of Pastor Alyssa, our finance team, and all who are served by the ministry of Cheney United Methodist Church, we are deeply grateful for your faithful commitment to our future work. Thank you for prayerfully considering what offering you'll make to God through our church in the coming year. Your gifts are an act of worship and an investment in opportunities to God work through each of us. My prayer is that you'll find greater contentment and simplicity in your life as you put God first in your giving and your living. And may we all experience the joy that comes from knowing that our gifts honor God and they change lives. And so, I offer these, our promised gifts, to God, asking that he bless them and provide us with spiritual guidance so that they may be used as he wills. I invite you all to join me now in the doxology as we give thanks to God for all he has done and humbly place our gifts before him. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Friends, will you join me in the prayer of dedication? God who works behind the scenes, 
We come this day bringing our humble gifts and our pledges, celebrating that through your Son you have called us into partnership through the body of Christ at Cheney United Methodist Church. We thank you for gathering together people possessing all the gifts we need to carry out our mission to seek, serve, and share Jesus Christ and bring forth your kingdom on earth. Receive these pledges given in good faith that the future holds the promise of more joyful service for you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Hi, I am Lori Dupler, and I am currently the head counter here at Cheney United Methodist Church. And I've been coming in on about a weekly basis to come in and do the church deposit. So I come in and I gather all the checks that have come in for the week and sometimes a little bit of cash. And I also gather up the paperwork that I need to do the deposit. And I've got a few things that I need to fill out as I do this. And of course the usual bank deposit slip that also gets filled out. And um, I just want to thank everybody for the support that you've been giving our church so that we can continue the missions that we have been working on. whether it's Cheney, Washington, or beyond. You are called to soothe the suffering, to live with compassion, to build up God's loving peace using the many gifts and callings you've been given. As you depart from this time of worship, go forth emboldened by the knowledge that you are a beloved part of the body of Christ, that you do work both up front and public, behind the scenes, alone if it's needed. Necessary and vital work is what you are called to do, to do the work of Jesus Christ in this community and beyond. So go in love, go in peace, and go with joy. Amen.
we'd like to give you a little behind the scenes glimpse of what it's like to join us on Wednesday nights at five o'clock with Zoom with the pastors. But rather than taking my word or Pastor Pat's word for why you should join with us for this super great fellowship time, I'd like you to hear from some of the other people who join us. So Floyd, why do you join Zoom with the pastors? Well, it's Floyd, and, and I join because it's a lot of fun. I get to see a lot of different people, and I, you know, I get a lot of fellowship out of it, and I can kid them a little bit, and I think that's great. You know, give them a little bit back, you know, they can't say a whole lot to me, so, so but I have fun. So, and yeah. I joined too. First of all, my daughter is the pastor, but you know, she had to remind me tonight because I was quilting, but I get to see all the friends that I normally would be seeing on church on a Sunday and I miss, miss dearly. And we have a blast on this and we get to see what everybody's plans are going on or lack of plans, I guess, and see what's going on in their lives in real time, not just in a newsletter. Great. Carol, what about you? I joined because it's fun and I enjoy the laughter and seeing the other people. And I have gotten to know better some, I am new to the congregation. So I have gotten to know better some of the people and particularly the people who are on the Zoom call. So Lynn. Hello, I sure enjoy visiting with my friends, even if we can't do it in person. It's great to be connected and see what everyone's doing, how everyone's doing. Pippin, how are you doing it? And Joanne? Joanne, we can't hear you. Can't hear we you. We can't hear. <laughs> hmm. I don't know why we don't have sound for you, Dale. We don't have sound for you and Joanna. I mean, you say it says you're unmuted, but we don't have sound. Don't worry, in post, Dale will just fix it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's can better, it's better. Can you hear us now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, I changed that, but okay. 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 I'm Joanna and this is Pippin. And we are lonely because, well, Pippin is used to getting petted by more people. And also, we don't like seeing them with masks. And so this is great because we see everybody's happy smiles. And it's wonderful. It's like we're really with people instead of we're with, I don't know, anonymous bandits. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, Carol Cree? Are you going to wrap us up? Sure. Um, this is just a, as an important a part of our week as Sunday morning worship is. We love it. We laugh. We never know what the uh, conversation is going to be. It takes all kinds of different twists and turns. And it's almost like sitting down in person with a whole group of, of friends. Uh, we even joined Zoom with the pastor last week when we were on vacation. It's just a part of our week and we love it. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. And please, if you haven't joined Zoom with the pastors, please consider joining us. I would be happy to help you figure out how to connect. And while we do have tons of fun and we laugh and tell stories and sometimes stay on topic, we also take time to lift up prayer concerns, joys and celebrations and lift each other in prayer. So if you could join us, we would love you to do so. And that's your behind the scenes clip of Zoom with the Pastors. <laughs>